What's up everyone and welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about the Swire Pacific Offshore ransomware attack by the Klopp Ransomware Gang. Let's see what we can learn from this story. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. A few weeks ago, Swire Pacific Offshore was looking for a cybersecurity engineer on LinkedIn. Now, they want this person to execute and implement all cybersecurity initiative and programs and to uphold the cybersecurity defenses that are already in place and ensuring that the organization remain protected from cyber attacks. So again, this is a LinkedIn posting. So, you know, they're looking for one cybersecurity engineer to keep their entire company safe. A job listing reads kind of like it's just this one person's responsibility to do everything. Anyway, two weeks later, Klopp Ransomware hit Swire Pacific Offshore and stole company data, but did not affect global operations, according to the statement by SPO. Now, the job listing on LinkedIn states that the role accountabilities include manage and execute the day-to-day -day cybersecurity administration and operations, identify emerging technology issues, including security trends, vulnerabilities, and threats, develop and execute IT policies on security standards and best practices, and need to be involved in compliance and control, cyber assessment processes, and documentation-related tasks. You need to attend to cybersecurity queries or, or doubts from end users via their help desk. You, you need to plan and conduct cybersecurity training for staff to increase awareness. You need to be responsible for for working with both internal and external IT auditors or IT audits, manage and maintain the security technologies that are uh, current in currently in place to ensure it continues to uphold the cyber defense um, effectively. And, and at the last thing is you need to be responsible to take on any ad hoc cybersecurity tasks as and when it is required. So that's all everything that was within the job posting on LinkedIn, whether they got somebody or not. Who knows? But two week, roughly two weeks after that post was done, they got hacked. Their response, or their, their public statement is, Swire Pacific Offshore has discovered that it was the target of a cyber attack, which involved unauthorized access to its IT systems. The unauthorized access has resulted in the loss of some confidential proprietary commercial information, and has resulted in the loss of some personal data, reads the media statement published by SBO. The cyber attack was not materially affected, or has not materially affected, SPO's global operations. It means it didn't shut them down. They stole a bunch of stuff, including uh, top secret confidential proprietary commercial information and information about like personal identifiable, inf identifiable information, but it didn't stop them from doing their business. A wholly owned subsidiary of Swire Pacific, Swire Pacific Offshore, is a marine services provider that delivers safe, reliable and sustainable marine services it was established in 1975 SPO owns and operates a diverse fleet of more than 50 vessels including anchor handling tug supply vessels platform supply vessels and a seismic survey vessel which well, with over 45 years of operation SPO owns and operates a diverse fleet of in every major oil exploration region outside of the US Gulf of Mexico you still with me now, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, it takes a second to click on the subscribe button below. Subscribing to my channel and smashing the bell means you'll be notified when I upload new episodes where I give you insights into the newest cybersecurity news stories. So with my insights, you can be better prepared to protect yourself, your family, and your company against these and other cyber attacks. So hit that subscribe button now, and let's continue learning about this story together. So as a leading marine service provider, Swire Pacific Offshore provides services including anchor handling, towing, and supply support for offshore drilling and production campaigns, uh, pipe lay and construction support. Uh, it also provides wind farm installation and transportation and decommissioning commissioning services through its associated company, Candler AS, which is listed on the Oslo Stock Exchange. The company announced to have taken immediate actions to reinforce existing security measures and to mitigate the potential impact of the security breach. Singapore, where Swire Pacific Offshore is headquarters, has some of the strictest data security regulations and requirements for reporting breaches. The company says that it immediately reported the incident to the relevant authorities and it also is working with data security experts to investigate and determine what future actions it may need to take. Klopp Ransomware published on its dark web leak site a sample of the stolen data that includes personally identifiable information. Based on the dark web posting by the group, it is believed that they were successful in taking data from Swire Pacific Offshore's personal files ranging from passwords, uh, excuse me, passports, 
payroll, banking information, email addresses, and more. Now, it is unclear which employee files were breached. No, Spire Pacific Offshore, through its management company, reports maintaining a register of over 2,000 officers and ratings from around the world. In June 2021, Ukrainian police arrested six alleged members of the Klopp gang, but believed to have, or who were believed to have been involved with money laundering related to the ransomware attacks. Now, the group first emerged in 2019, and despite the Ukrainian efforts supported by the U.S. and South Korea, the Klopp gang was reportedly back in operations just days after those arrests. Now, in terms of the industry, sort of the marine industry in the past, AP, Mahler, Ma Maersk, CMA, CGM, Costco, HM, M, K Line, and even the US Coast Guard and IMO have all reported some form of cyber attack. Now, an attack on South African port operator Transnet port terminals uh, last summer led to the company declaring a force majeure. At the beginning of this week, Bureau of Veritas reported that it had taken its servers temporarily offline after detecting illegal access to its systems. The IASME Consortium, which is a UK organization for cybersecurity and information assurance for smaller companies, estimates that over the past three years, cyber attacks on shipping incre uh, increased by 900%. So what can we learn from this? And when it comes to shipping companies, we should ha be uh, or have to have the sensitivity, given this ongoing supply chain delays, uh, we should have the sensitivity to know how serious such an attack can be. Even a company that provides anchor handling or towing, supply support for offshore drilling, ah, uh -uh. Offshore drilling equals oil. I won't mess with my oil, bro. More likely, the oil rig workers might not get their Snickers bars. I mean, this, they were delivering stuff to oil rigs. So, you know, some guy might be a little bit hungry. <laughs> but still, it can cause issues. But in all seriousness, the evidence I could find shows that SBO was vastly unprepared. They had a major listing up on LinkedIn which could have tipped attackers off to the attack of uh, or to the lack of security at the company and given attackers a target. Hey, everyone, look over here. There's no security guard at the gate. Now then, the way the job listing reads, the company is looking for a Superman with at least two years experience in and a basic understanding of cybersecurity. Yes, sir. I know what malware is. It's malicious software. Do I know how it works? Um, maybe? So in the end, the company was again unprepared, does not seem to understand the requirements for a cybersecurity engineer, it seems to be looking for the cheapest option available, and they got caught. Now we need to raise awareness of the importance of cybersecurity engineers along with the education to prepare them for the task at hand. Additionally, companies need to take a bottom-up approach to cybersecurity education. Putting the responsibility of an entire company's cybersecurity in one person's hands is pure folly. It's like trying to stop 500 leaks in a dam with one man and his 10 fingers. It's just not going to work. Each and every employee has to be educated with security first principles when doing just about any task. Whether it's walking in the front door when some stranger is standing outside asking to come in for a meeting they have with well, who knows who. Or opening an email that says it contains an invoice. Employees are the front line in cybersecurity war. So don't send them out there unarmed. With that... I say thanks again for watching, don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already, and smash the bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.